Hey everyone, it's Tony Tom Logan, and today we're going to be taking a look at two little baby i3 Alder Lake processors. One is the 12100, and the other one is the 12300 i3. Now there's only 10 pounds between these two little i3 processors, and they are actually 120 and 130 pounds each, which makes them quite accessible when you consider some of the uh, prices of the other processors that are out there. But obviously, at this segment of the market, we have, we have DDR4 options, DDR5 options. So what I'm going to try and do is, yes, we're going to take a full look at the performance of the processors, but I'm also going to give you a few handy tips and hints on where to spend your money wisely to build a decent system around one of these CPUs. <laughs> Okay then, so I have already said £120 and £130. The i3-12100 is the £120 option. The i3-12300 option is £130. They're both four core with hyper threading, so four cores and eight threads. The baby one boosts to 4.3 gigahertz and the 12300 boosts to 4.4 gigahertz. They are all P cores, there are no E cores, it's actually quite simplistic. But also when you think about this, it's a four core, eight thread processor that we would have called amazing back in the day around the 37700 for example, or the 3770, however you'd like to say it. Um, because they are not overclockable, it actually does mean that it makes a fair amount of sense as long as you're not thinking long term and maybe upgrading the processor in a few months or a year, that uh, you could jump on to the B660 platform. Now there are uh, like platforms below this which you could find cheaper motherboards but I'll only ever recommend you something that I have tested and I've, I have spent some time with uh, B660s although at this present moment in time it's only these two because Asus is still yet to send any. Um, but what it does mean is I have tested already a DDR4 and a DDR5 motherboard and they were identical. And one of the things I will say is I personally wouldn't uh, spend any extra money going for the DDR5 because the memory itself is going to cost you more money straight away. At the moment the pricing is around 80% more expensive to kind of jump up to an entry level one further up the pack and go from DDR4 to DDR5. But if we're going for a £120 processor, you're not going to want to spend £250 on memory. The difference between the two motherboards is only about £10 as well. So that's not a massive amount of saving, but by the time that you've bought the motherboard, uh, bought your DDR4 memory, you, you are going to be able to get uh, quite competitive then and save money for what in reality is going to be your uh, GPU and that's probably going to be the most stressful and expensive purchase that you're going to end up making. Now I'm going to pop the results up because the gaming, uh, if you have a look between the pack, there's actually not a lot between the two processors that we've tested but there's also not a huge amount of difference when you look at the more expensive Intels that we've already tested. We've mixed in some of the lower AMDs and stuff below just for a little bit of uh, variety. If we gave you all the results that we had, the graphs would be 300 miles long, so we, we've condensed them down for you. Uh, also, I test all of my processors uh, in exactly the same way. So all of the older Lake uh, processors have been through this exact system. Same motherboard, same graphics card. Yes, it's a 2080 Ti. People ask me why I didn't go for a 3080. Well, when was the last time you actually saw one? So I, I grabbed the graphics card that I'd used previously so that we could compare stuff. And that's the critical thing with the way that I test. We do it in a way that you can compare them. So yes, that is a 360 millimeter radiator on the top, but the fans didn't even spin up. They didn't need to. It didn't break a sweat, but I did try the little baby Intel processor and the, both the lots of temperatures were floating around just below and just above the 70 degrees mark. So this worked quite well, but it wasn't the quietest thing since sliced bread. I would suggest though that something like, and I'm just going to grab it just quickly, something like the Arctic cooler would be perfect as an entry level cooler. You're going to get everything that you need from a cooler like this and I'll show you a little bit more close up. 
you're going to get everything that you need from a cooler like that without breaking the bank. If you want to buy more expensive ones like Noctua's and stuff, then you're going to end up with slightly lower temperatures, but the most critical thing is going to be lower noise because the fans aren't going to need to work so hard uh, and it's just going to be a more pleasurable environment. I would kind of suggest though, that once you get onto a 120 tower with something like this, buy something that's going to work in your system uh, aesthetically or just don't worry about it, buy something that's reasonable and just live with it and just literally build it for the performance side of things. These are okay as a get-go. If you get one in the box but you're already getting a cooler, keep hold of it because it could be handy like if you have an emergency later on and you end up with something on your box. But I would say with the i3s, um, and I, I'm going to keep putting uh, results up for you so that you can keep looking and seeing the, the updated stuff, they're not going to break uh, any world records when it comes to performance in things like Blender or Cinebench, but it's a £120 processor. This is the sort of thing that you know would have cost two or three times this amount a few years ago, so the fact that you're getting really good performance down this segment actually makes the i3s uh, a very aggressive purchase for someone on a stringent budget. Now I say stringent because at the end of the day everything does cost a lot of money, but if you were to build a system around this and then maybe mix it in with like a 3070 kind of period uh, graphics card, you know, in that kind of table or a 6700 that we've got over here, because I actually do have a nice white 6700 and the fact that they're still in the background should say a lot. Um, and before you cry that it doesn't get used, it's the graphics card that I pull out when I do white stuff. That's why I have white stuff up there, I, yeah, anyway. Now it was at this point in the video where I waffled on for another five minutes about stuff that you could chuck together. Now the only reason why I didn't want to build something for you to look at was in reality the motherboards I've got quite limited. The MSI ones are M80X and the only ATX board I have is this Z690. Now it's a Z690 Strix, comes in at around £250. <clears throat> I actually did look to see if they had a B660 version that matched this kind of aesthetic uh, and that was still around the £240 mark. But I did find a cheaper uh, Asus that they do, um, I think they call it the Prime A, it comes in around £150 mark. Now you would lose the epic white aesthetic but you're saving yourself £100. So we can call the system that I've put together here and the results that I will pop up kind of as far as you'd want to kind of push with it because there are some very nice parts in there but I've gone for an aesthetic look and I've only done this plain and simply because I actually wanted to build a little system around this it's not that people are paying me to use um, graphics cards or coolers or anything like that it's literally just to kind of go little i3 system bosh there you go and then I run the games through it for you as well the CPU cooler didn't break 60 degrees at all. It was always around the kind of 56 to 58 mark. And that was with the uh, 12300 as well. Um, it never spun up. The fans on the uh, cooler didn't go above 1150 RPM. The fans on the graphics card didn't really budge either. Yes, it is a very expensive i3 system. I get that, but it's just, I've just done it with the parts that I had available. It's not meant to be a build video. It's just meant to give you an idea of what you can do. And you can see that they're very capable of playing the game. So with the right CPU, 130 pounds, a half decent motherboard, which could be as little as 150 pounds, bang in some DDR4, pick your storage drive, decide on your aesthetic, whether you're gonna go for a flashy, nice looking case. This case is 80 pounds, it's the 220T from Corsair. Yes, I have added different fans in it to make it look pretty. Um, but it's the kind of thing that you could do and then end up aspiring to like adding fans in a bit later it's, it's just kind of an idea for you but anyway i've not added up how much it would cost because this isn't the sort of thing that i normally do or like to do but we've got a few uh, cheap uh, graphics cards being launched over the next month or two so i thought it might be nice to be able to throw them in this now it does mean i'm gonna have to try and find the time to test some more graphics cards in this to make it fair but we'll see how it pans out you can let me know what you thought of me uh, chucking in a curveball because obviously I wouldn't normally do this I just stick with the fact that I spent two days testing the processes and I don't then normally spend another day building the system and retesting stuff but let me know what you think so 
for want of a better term, oh, that's not even the right way to go about it. But anyway, the little i3s, they're cracking processors and it can get you a really nice foot on the gaming uh, kind of like platform nice and early without having to spend an awful lot of money. They will perform well within games. It's only going to be the really hardcore multi threaded stuff that you're really going to find yourself let down on. But unless you're doing massive blender renders or lots of video editing or stuff like that i don't actually think it's going to matter if you are doing video editing and stuff as part of a hobby or something you're just going to need to realize it's going to take a little bit longer to do it but it's still going to be getting really good frame rates when you do crack it open and start playing with your games and it's not going to get hot and it's not going to get bothered i think that's pretty great for a 130 quid processor so i think you could do amazing things with one of these on a budget and still have a bit of a powerhouse, as far as gaming's concerned anyway. But like I said, let me know what you thought of the curveball that I chucked in at the end, and would you like to see me do this sort of stuff more often? Or should I just use this one a little bit more often? And I've obviously gone for white, because for face facts, I love white kit. Anyway, video's over now. 